All right, let's try this again. Good morning. <laughs> welcome to Union Congregational Church, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, uh, whether in these pews or online, whether today or throughout the week. We are glad that you're with us today. Um, this is the last Sunday of this church year. Uh, next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. Some churches are already jumping the gun and doing, uh, doing Advent today, uh, but we're following the rules. Um, so, <laughs> um, so, um, but uh, uh, doesn't, it, it wouldn't kill us if we didn't, but still. Um, <laughs> Um, so I have a couple of announcements, and then uh, uh, some, some other folks will have uh, some announcements also. Um, tomorrow is the last, um, tomorrow at 12.30 is your, um, your deadline to order poinsettias. Um, and uh, so please uh, feel free to barrage Alana with calls in the morning if you, um, if you would like to order a poinsettia to... Uh, beautify our sanctuary, and then to beautify your home afterwards. Um, so, <coughs> so, and speaking of that, um, beautifying our sanctuary, next week we are going to be uh, doing just that at 9 a.m., and, uh, and then also in the afternoon the, uh, the kids are going to be um, uh, doing uh, a rehearsal for the Advent program. And the Advent program is next week uh, a very fitting thing for the first Sunday of Advent. And uh, you won't have to hear me preach because the, uh, the message will be uh, the Advent program. So no sermon. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I know how much you all loved the fact that I was going to have a short sermon on All Saints Day. And, um, all, and, uh, and all of you are going to love that there is no sermon next week, so, um, so that's good. Um, Becky has a couple of announcements. You want to come up? Good morning. Uh, the shoe drive is going really well. I want to thank you. Uh, for all the donations. Uh, we'll still take donations through December 3rd. And between the Wapan Food Tra Pantry, um, the Reach Wapan, and maybe the PE department with some of those nice tennis shoes, uh, they would be happy to receive those donations. So thank you for that. Um, the giving tree is up. It, because we um, got it up a little late this year, we do have a lot of general uh, donations. If it just lists a store, uh, we're looking for gift cards, any denomination. So if it just says Piggly Wiggly, it's a gift card of whatever you decide. Um, um, also, if it says size one boots, size two boots, we're referring to the children's size one, children's size two, I believe. No, I'm sorry, not children's, but like the youth size one and two. Um, if you're not sure, you can stick to the gift cards. Uh, but either way, Amber said, she, she's the one who helps me with the uh, giving tree. She said she will definitely get them to kids uh, appropriately. So, um, And then, let's see, I just wanted to let the, the congregation know that uh, starting with Advent, the first Sunday of Advent, next week's program, we are going to bring back acolyting. And between our confirmation um, kids and our shepherds, so that's seven different kids. Um, during the 9 and 9.30 services, we're actually going to have them walk up from the back, uh, light the Christ candle here on the altar, and then during the closing hymn, um, put out the candle. Um, so we'll be looking for acolytes to do that each Sunday, starting next Sunday. I have December 3rd all figured out, though. Um, so I just wanted people to know that that'll be kind of a, a little formality that we're not used to with the pastor coming up the aisle from the back um, also. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you, Becky. Um, Rick, did you want to come and talk about uh, committee vacancies?
Last week, you got to hear from our nomination committee from Sue and from Deb. Uh, there was a very nice response after the service. We have filled most of the committee positions, but we still have a couple of very key important uh, areas that we could need to be filled. Jane has done a marvelous job with being our clerk. I, t I told her she couldn't quit, but she says she's done. <laughs> She does a great job taking notes and is very prompt in getting the minutes out. So appreciate the work you do, but we do need a clerk. So if you would consider that. Also, thank you to Christine for accepting the moderator position, but we have a moderator elect position open as well. Um, and we have, what was the third one that we had open? Um, there Ed? are two openings on Christian Ed. I yeah, think. Christian Ed, two slots on, on Christian Ed. So if you would take these things under consideration, uh, we very much need to fill clerk and moderator elect especially. So thank you. Thanks, Rick. Any other announcements this morning? Yeah. Well, I was going to have to announce that we <clears throat> need help this um, winter because of our outdoor janitor having some health concerns. But after the last service, Tim Vanderkin came forward and said he will be the winter uh, snow removal go-to guy. So, Hooray. and then Matt. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And Dewey took care of us this morning with the uh, text from Og, it snowed from me. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we would have gotten it coordinated somehow, but Tim came forward and then um, it, he might tag People, if they need to be gone for the weekend, he might just take someone to, yeah. to take care, help him out. Yeah, yeah. And I, I rejoice because, um, because I know that this congregation, when, when we are aware of a need, this congregation always seems to rise to the occasion and, and makes it work. And um, I, 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 I give great thanks, and I don't take it for granted because not all congregations are are that um, that prompt and that proactive. So um, thank you uh, from me, and I'm and and um, I want to give thanks to uh, the property committee because um, we because uh, this is a this is a difficult circumstance and and. The property committee and and Deanne are are all responding with um, with with grace and with care and with compassion and um, I I just really really deeply appreciate that. Um, any other announcements this morning before we start worship? Okay, Deanne. Would you please rise and join me in the call to worship? Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord. Know that the Lord is God. The Lord. Amen. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and the courts of the Lord with praise. For the Lord is good. God steadfast endures forever and ever. Our opening prayer. Sovereign God, in your steadfast love and faithfulness, you relentlessly seek us and gather us in your presence. Help us likewise to seek you, for you have told us where you may be found, not only in places of power and might, but in every place where your people cry out in need. As we meet you in this service of worship, send us out to meet you in the acts of service, doing justice and sharing your love through Christ, our reigning Lord. Amen. And our opening hymn this morning is number 14, Now Thank We All Our God.
You may be seated. But now comes the time where our young worshipers will join uh, Becky and I up on the steps. <laughs> Lots of people today. This is great. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. I got a question for you. Oh, okay. one more, one more. Oh. Wait, wait. <laughs> Good deal. Hi, Trey. <laughs> I have a big question for you today. How can we show that we care for others? Because Pastor Jacob's going to talk today about taking care of other people. How do we already take care of other people? Anybody know? How do we take care of people? Say visit people now. Visit people at the hospital. Visit people at the hospital. Good job. Love it. How else can we show that we care? Uh, helping them. Helping them. Helping people. Yeah. Did yeah. anybody get out the shovel today? Did you go out and shovel? What, you shovel? Well, half of the driveway. Half the driveway. Did you shovel too? A quarter of it. A quarter of it. Hey, that's all helpful, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Did you guys have company for Thanksgiving this year? Anybody have company at their house for Thanksgiving? Look at the hands yeah, go up. Did yeah. you help mom get ready, get the house ready? Uh -huh. Look at that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great. It's all about caring for others. When we do things together, we, we show that we care. Sound good? Yeah. All right. You guys are doing an excellent job of caring for others. Every week I hear that they help out around the house and you pick up toys and everything. So you guys are awesome. I, I clean my room um, um, and my sister's room. Wow. You even help with your sister's wow. room. Not he, everybody he does that. Yes, and he made his bed. That's oh my gosh. Right. Just you, you cleaned your room and your sister's room by yourself. Uh, uh, wow. wow. That is awesome. You can come to my house and help me too. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, or yes, Pastor Jacob, yes, would indeed. you lead us in prayer this morning? All right. I'm going to say a short phrase and I invite you to repeat it back to me. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for teaching us, for teaching us how, to love others, how to love others by helping others. By helping others. Help us Continue to share your love, to share your love. Wherever, we go. wherever we go. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, everybody. This morning's scripture from the Old Testament is Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16, 20 through 24. The Lord, the Lord God proclaims, I myself will search for my flock and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out the flock, when some in the flock have been scattered, so will I seek out my flock. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered during the time of clouds and thick darkness. I will gather and lead them out from the countries and peoples, and I will bring them to their own fertile land. I will feed them on Israel's highlands, along the riverbeds, and in all the inhabited places. I will feed them in good pasture, and their sheepfold will be there on Israel's lofty highlands. On Israel's highlands, they will lie down in a secure fold and feed on green pastures. I myself will feed my flock and make them lie down. This is what the Lord God says. I will seek out the lost, bring back the strays, bind up the wounded, and strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy, because I will tend my sheep with justice. So the Lord God proclaims to them, I will judge between the fat and the lean sheep. You shove with shoulder and flank, and with your horns you ram all the sweet, weak sheep until you scattered them outside. But I will rescue my flock so that they will never again be prey. 
I will even judge between the sheep. I will appoint them for a single shepherd, and he will feed them. My servant David will feed them. He will be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be their prince. I, the Lord, have spoken. And from our New Testament, Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Now, when the human one comes in his majesty and all his angels are with him, he will sit on his majestic throne. All the nations will be gathered in front of him. He will separate them from each other, just as a shepherd, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right side, but the goats he will put on his left. Then the king will say to those in, on his right, Come, you who will receive good things from my father. Inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. I was hungry, and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you as a stranger and welcome you, or naked and give you clothes to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will reply to them, I assure you that when you have done it, for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, get away from me. You will receive terrible things. Go into the unending fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry and you didn't give me food to eat. I was thirsty and you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't welcome me. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then the Lord will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and didn't do anything to help you? Then he will answer, I assure you that when you haven't done it for one of the least of these, you haven't done it for me and they will go away into internal punishment but the righteous ones will go into eternal life here and the readings for today may God bless us as we learn from these holy words amen thank you Deanne um, before I give my sermon, I realized that I, I didn't uh, share another announcement that I had. Um, on Tuesday, I'm not going to have regular office hours because I've, invi I've been invited to, um, be, um, to be at Lakeland University, my alma mater, on Tuesday uh, doing an event there. Uh, so um, if, you, um, if you need me, um, you, can send me a, you can send me an email or a text or whatever, and I'll get back to you as soon as I as soon as I can. So I wanted to let you know uh, while I was uh, thinking about it that I wasn't going to be in on Tuesday. <coughs> so my friends, will you join me in prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts in this hour be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I recently found a story on a website that I browse periodically called Upworthy.com. Upworthy posts stories from around the world that give commentary on social issues. And sometimes these stories remind us of the positive moments of people making a meaningful difference in the world. And other times, these stories offer stark reminders of uh, what needs to be done in our society so that everybody has what they need. 
This particular story is one that I've wanted to share for a while, uh, but I, I was trying to find the right moment. Um, this is, this is a story that was published originally in March, I think, of this year. Uh, this story is out of Ontario, Canada, and it follows a woman by the name of Danielle and a man by the name of Brian. You'll see them up on the screen there. So Danielle owns a farm that employs many workers to keep it running. And one day, she saw Brian sitting on the street corner, reading a book and collecting change. Brian was experiencing homelessness and told Danielle his story. He told her about his journey as a recovering drug addict, surviving abuse, and losing two wives, one in a car accident and one to cancer. And it was so clear that Brian needed another shot. He needed a win. Danielle was so moved by Brian's story and wanted to help Brian, but she didn't just give him a few dollars and uh, go on her merry way like many people do. She offered him a job at the family farm starting the very next day. And if that wasn't enough, she organized in the community to help him get basic financial assistance and a phone and a hotel room to stay at. And they're now looking for a more permanent housing situation for, for Brian, uh, supported by generous donations from people around the world. Um, so uh, a, a story of, of real redemption, I think. Um, of course, there are far too many stories like this in the world. And it's so easy to get discouraged by the enormity of the world's problems. And even without looking past our own community, people here in Wapan and Beaver Dam and the surrounding area, we, uh, we know of people who are struggling to make ends meet. And our country is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, and yet not everybody has the same opportunities. Some of the circumstances people face result from their own decision-making, but many result from the unexpected circumstances and untenable situations that people find themselves in. So today, I'm going to talk about how Jesus calls us to respond to the needs of the world and uh, what was most important to Christ in his ministry. So I'll admit that the theological significance of Reign of Christ Sunday can be tricky for some of us. Uh, most of the theological backbone of this Sunday has to do with the desire for Christ to reign in power throughout the world and for Christ's teachings to govern as much of the social order as possible. Now, as much as I personally find the message of Christ compelling, I wouldn't be a Christian pastor if I didn't, I'm, I'm sensitive to the many colleagues that I have who profess other faiths or no faith. Christians uh, don't have a monopoly on good moral judgment. And in fact, many hurtful things are done in the name of Christianity every day. Christianity has infiltrated our political system and affected our social attitudes in dangerous ways. Anti-LGBTQ rhetoric at the state, local, and federal levels alienate people and prevent them from living fully into who God, who, who God has created them to be. People living with mental illnesses are told that if they just prayed more, or if they accepted Jesus more fully into their lives, all of their problems would just go away. And anybody who loves somebody or knows somebody with, uh, with mental illness or who advocates uh, for people who have mental illnesses know that it just doesn't work that way. And we, we also have to qualify that it's an open communion table when we do communion because so many people have been denied the sacrament so many times just because of who they are, because of something I can't control. 
In some, I think the commentator John Buchanan says it best. The God of Jesus, God of the Bible, is not a remote supreme being living on a throne up there in the clouds or out there somewhere in the mysterious reaches of the universe, he says. Jesus said God is here in the messiness and ambiguity of human life. God is here, particularly in your neighbor, the one who needs you. You want to see the face of God? Look into the face of the least of these the vulnerable, the weak, the children. So ends his quotation. In fact, Jesus uh, uses how we respond to the needs of the, those around us as a litmus test to who will receive the greatest blessings that God can give. Jesus puts people into the two categories of sheep and goats. Uh, the, the sheep are the ones who follow the ways of Jesus, and the goats symbolize those who don't. The entirety of Matthew's gospel looks towards the day where Jesus will judge the righteous and the unrighteous, those who have understood the assignment and those who have not. He says, the king will reply to them, I assure you, that whenever you have done it for the least of these brothers and sisters and siblings of mine, you have done it for me. Now as we wrap up this Thanksgiving weekend, and as we set our faces towards Advent, we recognize the call of Jesus to love the least in our communities. Now Danielle, from my story earlier, understood the assignment the way she helped Brian and rallied the community to do the same. As a result, Brian had a very real chance to restart his life and do meaningful work in the world. And Danielle also insisted that her generosity wasn't just an act of charity. Uh, on the contrary, th their friendship was an equal blessing to her as well. On top of that, the local community had an opportunity to contribute to the restorative work of supporting a person in need as he found his way again. And maybe some of us might not have the opportunity to help in such a specific way, being able to put a name to the need, but we have so many important needs in our community. We have so many great organizations that uh, do this work, uh, like Reach Wapan and like Church Health Services and the Food Pantry and others. And we can provide everything from basic needs for clothing and food to dental and mental health care to valuable companionship. So as we await the coming of Christ into our lives, into a weary world once again, what kind of community care might you be called to do? How will you share love with those who need it the most? Together, we are called to love others as generously as God has loved us. And the people the rest of the world puts aside might be the very same people that Christ asks us to love the most. So let's get to work. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next hymn is number 391. This is uh, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant. Please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so. <laughs>
We now come into a time of more intentional prayer. Let's take a moment and, and, and be in silent prayer for those who are on our hearts who need our prayers today. So I have a few prayer requests. Um, I will offer these and then um, I'll solicit yours. And as usual, after a prayer petition, I will say, God, in your mercy. And if you like, I invite you to respond with receive our prayer. So, of course, we pray for Mark, our outdoor custodian, as he, um, as he prepares for open heart surgery. Uh, for Mark and for Chris, God, in your mercy. And connected to that, for, uh, for Tim and for our property committee, um, who are handling Mark's absence with uh, care and compassion and, and coordinating the important work that needs to be done for all of them. God in your mercy. Um, continued prayers for Terry and Lana Meyer. Um, t uh, Terry is uh, going, they're going back and forth a bunch to Freydert Hospital as he is exploring options for experimental cancer treatment. So for them, God in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uh, for the family of Lisa Roth, um, both of her parents uh, have died recently and um, within the last few months, I think, and they're, uh, they're having a, uh, a service to remember their lives uh, tomorrow. So as they grieve, uh, God in your mercy. What other prayers do we bring? This morning, Alana will be coming around with a mic. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. My daughter, Deidre, blessed our family with my fifth grandchild on Thanksgiving Day. Elias Ronan Butine arrived. Wonderful. <laughs> So for the happy family, God on your mercy, receive our prayer. Anything else today? I'll give you just a moment to look. Is there anything on Zoom? No. Okay. Then let's be in prayer. Loving God, you make it clear that uh, to serve you means to serve those among us and around us and beside us. And that serving you means serving the world, helping those who experience poverty, homelessness, food insecurity, and discrimination in all its forms. We give you thanks that you give us the grace and empower us to do that work. We ask you to be uh, with all of those people whose names uh, we have voiced, either out loud or in our hearts. For Mark and for Chris and for our property committee and for Tim and for Terry and Lana and the family of Lisa. We ask you to be with them in a special way and help us be with them as we can to serve them and to love them as they need. And we give you thanks for the reminder of new life and hope in a world where hope seems hopeless through the birth of Elias. We ask all of these things in the name of your son Jesus, who uh, showed us the way and taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The time has come to offer our gifts back to God. Here at Union Congregational Church, we give thanks for all gifts that are given, whether through time, talent, treasure, or prayer. Please give generously as your heart and spirit invite you to give. Please join us in our doxology. Join me in the prayer of dedication. Jesus, our brother and friend, you have made it clear that serving you means serving those in need. May we respond to your call to serve the last, the lost, the least, and the marginalized. May we do so not to feel good about ourselves, but because you call us to do good in the world to meet you and our neighbors. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 273, Yezu, Yezu. We'll be singing verses 2, 3, and 4.
friends, receive these words of benediction. As God, our shepherd, has searched for you, search for Christ where he may be found, empowered there to serve with love and justice. And now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.